Hello, everybody. We are keeping a notebook together again, and I hope you're hungry. I'm Amy Ludwig Vanderwater, and this is Betsy the Writing Camper. We both live in western New York, and in a moment, I'll be inside that camper speaking to you. I'm calling today's writing talk, My Food History. Hello to you, wherever you are, whatever your weather is, whatever time of day it is. I am very happy you're back here joining me in Betsy the Writing Camper, and I would like to start by giving you a big high five. So hand up. We're back. Today's writing exercise is about food. And I had this book on my shelf. I'm taking the time to enjoy going back through many books on my shelf. And this book by Nicole Gulotta is called Eat This Poem, A Literary Feast of Recipes Inspired by Poetry. And what's kind of neat about this book is it has different things in it. It has recipes and it has poetry. And it has prose, which is writing that's not poetry, just about food. So this book is full of all kinds of treats. And it made me think about something. There's a line here where Nicole says, mm -hmm. she calls, she uses the phrase, our food histories. And it made me think about my food history and the different foods that have been important to me in my life, things I've cooked or things that people have cooked for me or just junk food I like. And so, well, you'll see, first of all, I did um, attach my book to the Raisin Bran cover. If you remember, I've been talking about this for a while. I had a sewn together bunch of pages and all I did yesterday was cut this cover to match about the size of my little new notebook. And then what I did is I put glue on this piece of paper on the back and glue on this piece of paper on the back and I just glued it right to this cover. And then you can see right down the middle where I sewed it, you'll see those are the stitches. We used to see them on the outside of the little white booklet, but we don't see them here because it's glued inside. I might take some of this colorful paper and glue it down here just to dress it up a little bit, or maybe on the cover just to dress it up a little bit, but we'll see about that. So you may have noticed this when I picked it up, but back to eat this poem. So thinking about food histories, I decided to draw kind of a funny shaped timeline here. I had actually a blast doing it and you can see it right here. And what I did is I started when I was little and I kind of went up until now. And then I just drew and jotted the names of all different foods that have been foods that I've liked or cooked or loved or hated or whatnot. So I'll just, I'll read you a couple of them here. <clears throat> One, I, when I was a little girl, I used to love chocolate and peanut butter toast. So I have that. We used to always go to Pizza Hut and McDonald's with my grandma after we took her grocery shopping or we took her to run some errands. Um, uh, Easter bunnies. I used to get an Easter bunny at Easter and I would always feel guilty to bite the head off. So that would sit around for a little while. Popcorn. My dad made popcorn on the stovetop. I still do that with oil and lots of butter. My friend Sally, who's riding along with us, she's an assistant principal in Texas. She makes the best carrot cake ever. So I still make it for my mom for her birthday. I love picking berries. Chili is something I make a lot. Butter and sage is a special pasta that I learned to make in college. We make cider here. We have a cider press. And every fall we make cider at home. So anyway, there's tons of little foods on here. And I just wrote their names. And then later, and as I did, I went in and drew these little sketches to go with them. Then I chose one to write more about. And here's what I chose. I chose the butter and sage pasta. We plant sage in our garden and I wrote this. Some foods are very fancy and expensive and take a long time to cook. And it's easy to think that fancy is better. The truth is that many of my favorite foods are not fancy at all. They're as simple as can be. One of my top favorites is butter and sage pasta. And you only need four ingredients, butter, sage, pasta just like the name of the dish, and Parmesan or Romano cheese. All you do is saute the sage in the butter, pour it over the pasta, and sprinkle with the cheese. 
I learned this recipe from my friends Wes and Lynn, and Mark, my husband, learned it from them too. So when we got married, I potted sage in terracotta pots, and I typed out the recipe and stuck it on a stick in the dirt. These, fla these favors looked like this. They were inexpensive and homemade, and I wonder how many people who attended our wedding actually made this dish. We've been married for almost 25 years, and now our whole family is happy to see the sage plants when they're all full of leaves in the summer. The plants live in an old metal wash tub and usually get replaced each year. I love going out to pick the leaves and then smelling sage on my hands for a while afterward. You know what's funny? We have a dog named Sage, and while I've always liked that name, I never connected it to my favorite pasta dish until now. It seems that many of the brain's connections are almost underwater in some way and come to light through writing. Our eldest daughter cooks butter and sage pasta at college for her roommates now. They put it on butternut squash ravioli, and with all the world words I know, I'm struggling to find the ones that tell just how yummy this is. So while well, fancy can be great, simple is fabulous too. Tomorrow, I may just make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I love those. Actually, I might make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich today. So for this writing exercise, all you do is think of foods. They might be foods you've cooked. They might be foods that someone in your family cooks for you. They might be a favorite school lunch. It might be a breakfast that you eat or a kind of cereal. It might be a food that you've picked outside yourself. It might be a food you don't like at all. I could add on here jello. I do not like jello. So Food is the thought of the day, and I think you may also enjoy making this. I encourage you to play with the little teeny tiny drawings. I felt like a cartoonist doing this, and then added a little bit of drawing in here and writing about this food. I might go back and write more about this later, and peanut butter and jelly is absolutely completely on my mind right now. So happy writing, happy eating. It was wonderful to see you, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. In her book, Nicole Gulata writes, Eat This Poem aims to capture a range of experiences, all the moments that make up our food histories. Here you can see my food history timeline. And here you can see where I wrote about my favorite pasta, butter and sage. These are the sage plants in my garden. You can tell they're dried up now, but I can still use the leaves. This is our dog Sage, just like the herb. She is part Border Collie, part Great Pyrenees, and she is not allowed to sleep on the bed. As you go through your day today and through your days this week, pay attention to the foods you eat and the foods you remember. You can always add more memories to your food history. See you tomorrow.